Hello, this is New Vision TV. I'm Lynn Komdisha. When you talk about intelligence services, most Ugandans think of ESO, ESO, CMI, and to a list extent, Police CID. Few are aware that their country had a unit of thoroughly trained non-partisan professionals whose job involved monitoring threats to state and public safety. Now, as the new IGP sets about reorganizing the police, New Vision TV examines the chances whether he will re-establish the special branch which was disbanded some 10 years ago. Now, countries that had their police designed along the British system traditionally have a unit known as the Special Branch, which is staffed by trained investigators to inspect, detect, and monitor threats to the safety of the public and stability of the state. Most of the Special Branch do not operate in visible units and formations like other forces, but are embedded in different sectors of society, even the armed forces. They are all ultimately governed and coordinated from the police headquarters by the director special branch. Uganda also always had a special branch since before and after independence, which was staffed by professionals who never publicized their activities. Some Ugandans got to know about the presence of such an important organization in 1998 after the twin bombing of the American embassies in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam by Al-Qaeda terrorists which left more than 200 people dead. It transpired that the one in Kampala was also targeted, but the vigilance of Uganda's special branch forced them to abort. Trucks loaded with explosives were captured in the basement of a building on Kampala Road before they could be detonated. Special branch usually does not arrest, and when the fruits of their work are realized, it is the regular police and other bodies like ISO and the military which do the execution that enjoy the praises. And so was the case with the foiled Kampala bombing and the subsequent squashing of terrorist missions against Kampala in the late 90s and the early 2000s. A year or two after General Kale Kaihura was named IGP, he disbanded the special branch and its roles were vested in the new police units like counter-terrorism and special investigations. Almost a decade later, Kaihura told the press that the special branch would never be revived as long as he was IGP. He gave the reason for disbanding it that they were giving intelligence to the wrong people. He elaborates that special branch personnel were passing information to the West. Sources in security have told New Vision TV that the reason the now former IGP was uneasy with special branch is that they owed more allegiance to the parent Ministry of Internal Affairs than the police headquarters. Special branch agents always file their reports with the minister and, of course, brief the minister about the operations. In fact, Kaihura had told the press as much two years ago that special branch work was not of direct benefit to the police as it reported to the minister. The disbanding of the special branch a decade ago could, however, have led to unformable laws to the state because the bodies that took over its functions did not have equal expertise and experience. The special branch officers were not supposed to have partisan political allegiances. Now, the new IGP or Koth Ochola, the public has put a lot of hope for a cleaner and efficient police force. He is already being referred to by his initials as Omo, the powerful detergent to clean up stains. Now, if, as the new IGP believes, professionalism in Uganda police died in 2005, is he ready to include the restoration of special branch on his agenda? Moving on, President Yuri Museveni and his running counterpart Paul Kagame have dispelled talk about a rift between the two neighbors, but agreed their institutions will consult more often on areas of mutual interest. Kagame, who was yesterday in the country for a one-day official visit, held talks with Museveni at State House in Tebe, accompanied by Rwanda's Foreign Affairs Minister Louis Mushikiwabo and several officials. Kagame's convoy ambled into the State House compound at 11:30 a.m 
where he was received by his waiting host. Museveni and Kagame retreated for closed-door talks, attended by ministers Sam Kutesa, Foreign Affairs, Adolf Mwesige of Defense, Azuban Tege, Works and Transport, Irene Muloni of Energy, Eli Tumwini of Security, Chirunda Chivei Jinja, East African Community Affairs, and the Attorney General, William Biaruhanga. Two and a half hours later, the two leaders took time to shed light on some of the points of discussion and brushed aside reports of inclement relations. Now, two people died on sports in an accident Saturday evening around Nyachalala Airfield along the Mbara Ibanda Road. Over 10 others were rushed to Mbara Hospital where they are nursing injuries. The Riz Region Police Traffic Officer Justin Opu said a commuter taxi registration number UAY815L lost control after the tire burst. And in sports news, Uganda Cranes beat Sao Tome and Principal Saturday evening in a friendly at Nambola Stadium as coach Sebastian De Sebri picked his first win at home ever since he joined the team three months ago. Joseph Ochaya, Murushid Juko and debutant Abraham Mundugwa each had a goal for the Cranes. Jose Vareya scored a consolation for Sao Tome and Principal. Uganda will tomorrow face Malawi in a second friendly at Nambole, both trial games are preparing the national team for the 2019 AFCON qualifier with Tanzania on September 7th at Nambole. Cranes in Group L with Tanzania, Lesotho and Cape Verde top the group with three points. You're still watching New Vision TV and now for Apollo of Africa series, we take a look at Lekumburu National Park. This national park is located in western Uganda, particularly in Chiruhura district. Lekumburu National Park is known as the Whispers in the Wind because it is surrounded with a freshwater lake. So many animals are kept at the park, but most importantly, the adventure here is awesome. Take a look. Feel the wild in the heart of Lekimbura National Park. The sounds generated from the birds and the wind from Lekimbura blowing through the park create a priceless moment one cannot find anywhere in the wilderness. After a four-hour drive from Kampala, Uganda's capital city through Masaka, Liantonde to Kiruhura district is where you can find Lekimbura National Park. About 20% of Lake Mbura National Park is surface is covered with water. This is Lake Mbura, from which the National Park derives its name. Quality lodges ranging from budget to luxury are available in the park. The spacious grounds at Lake Imbura National Park make it a unique game reserve where people can hike, engage in mountain biking and also horseback riding safaris within the outside of the park. The animals from zebras, giraffes, antelopes are also found in Lake Imbura National Park. Find time and visit Lake Imbura National Park. Now for Mobile of Africa Stories, visit our website www.newvision.co.ug. Our newspaper, The Sunday Vision, is also another home of adventures. So get your copy every Sunday for Pearl of Africa Stories. And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more of your updates on your mobile, on your desktop, on your tablet, anywhere on the go by visiting www.newvision.co.ug. I am Lynn Komjisha.